The purpose of this assignment is to be able to make a prediction about the direction that parallel light rays, meaning light rays that come in parallel um, to the axis of the lens, what direction those light rays will be going when they come out the other side of the lens. So this is an example of the type of lens we're going to look at in this assignment. It's called a double convex lens because both sides of the lens are curved outward. And we're going to consider each of these to be um, have a circular curvature, so almost as if this would be the shape of part of a sphere, and this would be the shape of another sphere. So sort of like two, two spherical curvatures put together. Now if you were to take a slice of this lens, take a slice out of the middle of the lens, you might end up with something like this. So we have a uh, curvature here that could be considered to be part of a larger circle and a curvature here that could be considered to be part of a larger circle. Okay, and this is the lens that we'll be using in class to test your prediction. So we'll send in some light rays like this in class and we'll want to see where they come out the other side. Okay, but I'm just going to trace this to show you the circular curvatures. So if this is the shape of the lens, the idea is that this is part of a larger circle, and then this edge of the lens is also part of a larger circle. Okay, so you have two, two circular curvatures that make up this lens. So the first page here is intended to explain where this diagram comes from. So this is the diagram where you're going to make your prediction. And I want to explain now, this right here is the lens, so sort of a magnified, much larger version of this. These are the light rays coming in. So the purpose of this first page is to explain where this diagram uh, came from, how we got the shape of the lens. So this first picture, step one, shows two circles Here's the center of each circle, and that those two circles are overlapping. Okay, so this is the center of the left circle. This is the center of the right-hand circle. Now, in the second picture here, what I have done is just erased these parts of the circles. Okay, so the only part of the, each circle that I have kept is this part here where they overlap. And I've also kept these uh, centers of the circles. Okay, so here's the center of the one circle, here's the center of the other circle. You can imagine where the rest of those circles were. Okay, but this is going to be the shape of our lens. Okay, sort of an aerial view of a slice of the lens. And it says here that the material of this lens is glass, so the index of refraction is 1.5. So N for this part in here is 1.5. And then outside, it's surrounded by air, so the index of refraction everywhere around the lens will be 1.0. Now in the third diagram, I have drawn three light rays that are incident in the air, and they're going to strike the lens right here on this edge of it. And the purpose of the activity on the next sheet, what we'll be doing is we'll be drawing using Snell's Law, figuring out what are the directions that each light ray is going to continue at this boundary. So this is a boundary between air and glass. Here's another boundary, and here's another boundary. Okay, what's the direction that that light ray is going to take when it crosses that boundary? And the last step before we're ready to start drawing our light rays is to ask and figure out what is the angle of incidence for each of these light rays. Now here's what, this is a little bit different than what you've done before because we have now a curved surface. So we have an incoming light ray that is striking a curved surface. When you do that, you need to carefully draw a normal to the surface. Okay, now remember that the normal is perpendicular to the surface. So the explanation here says the angle of incidence is measured from the normal. So we need to draw a normal at each place where an incident ray hits the boundary between the air and the glass. Because the radius of a circle is perpendicular to its surface, 
If we draw the radius at the point where the light ray hits the boundary, we will have our normal line. So the idea here is, remember that this is part of a circle. Remember that this is the center of that circle. Here's a radius. Okay, so we're drawing a radius at the place where the light ray hits the boundary. So the light ray is hitting the glass. If I draw a radius at that point, and I'm actually extending it past because I want my normal line to go past the boundary, this is perpendicular here. The radius is perpendicular to the tangent to the circle right there. Okay, so that's how we get our normal, is we can draw a radius and extend it. Okay, so this is the normal. This is my incident light ray, and so this is my incident angle. Now this light ray is coming straight in. So when we draw the radius to the circle at that point, it's just going to be along the same direction as the light ray. And then for this incoming light ray, here is the radius, which is the normal, remember perpendicular to the surface at that point, and this would be the incident angle. Okay? Now once you know those incident angles, you can calculate using Snell's Law what the angle of refraction will be. I'm going to walk through the very first one with you. So here is the template that we're going to work with. This dot is the center of this circle. You might even want to draw in the rest of the circle if it helps you remember what's going on. This dot here is the center of this other circular edge. Okay. So I'm going to start with this. Let's say this is light ray number one. It is hitting the boundary right here. This radius line that is already been drawn for you. That is the normal at this point. So to find the incident angle, I need the angle between the light ray and the normal. So I'm going to measure that with my protractor by placing my protractor on the boundary and lining up the 90 degree with the normal. Okay, and I find that my incident angle is 20 degrees. Now the question is what's going to happen when it crosses that boundary? And it might even help you to turn your page so that you know the normal is straight up and down. Maybe that looks a little more typical for you. So the question is what's the refracted angle going to be here? Well we know the light ray is going from a less optically dense material to a more optically dense material. So we would expect it to bend toward the normal. So we would expect to get a refracted angle of something less than 20 degrees. And we can use Snell's Law to calculate this. So let's go ahead and do that calculation. So Snell's Law is N1 sine theta i equals N2 sine theta r. And the incident material was air. So the index of refraction for air is 1. The incident angle is 20 degrees. Um, the index of refraction for this inner material of the lens was 1.5. That was given on the first sheet of the assignment. And then we need to calculate theta r. So go ahead and get your get calculator and find out what you get for theta r. Theta R comes out to be 13.3 degrees. So 13 degrees is about as accurate as I can measure. And now we're ready to draw that angle on our diagram. So I'm going to turn this. It's a little easier for me to see what I'm doing. This is my incident light ray. And coming in at 20 degrees, here's the normal. So the refracted ray is going to be over here. 13 degrees away from the normal. So lining up the protractor on the boundary okay, with the 90 degree mark along the normal. We need 13 degrees. 10, 11, 12, 13. That's going to be at this angle. Okay. 
Okay, so it travels in this direction. Now be careful not to go past this boundary because this is another place now where the index of refraction is changing and the light ray is going to bend at this boundary. So we have to stop at that point. This angle was 13 degrees. So now what? We want to know the direction the light ray is going to travel when it comes out the other side of the lens. So we have to apply Snell's law again at this boundary. So in order to find the angle of incidence, you need to draw a normal at this point. Well, remember that this is part of a circle. And so if you could draw the radius that touches the circle at this point, you would have a normal. It would be perpendicular to the edge of the circle here. So here's the center of this circle. So I'm going to draw a radius, and that's going to be the normal at that point. So I'm making a dashed line along the radius. Okay, so this is the normal. Okay, I'm going to turn the paper. Okay, so here's the normal. Here's the boundary. Okay, that light ray is going to refract over here. Because we're going from more dense to less dense, it's going to bend away from the normal. So rather than go straight, it's going to bend over this direction. So we want to find that angle of refraction. So go ahead, measure your angle of incidence, and apply Snell's law, and calculate the angle of refraction, and then draw it in. So pause the video, and then uh, when you're done, turn it on again and check your work. So applying Snell's Law to this second boundary, for light ray number one, the N1 is now the inside material of the lens, which is 1.5 times sine of 23 degrees. The outside material is air, so 1.0 times the sine of the refracted angle. Calculating that, I get 35.9 degrees, so I'm going to call that 36 degrees, is my angle of refraction. Now I'm going to turn my paper so that I have my normal, my incident angle, my boundary. Okay, it's all a little tilted and skewed because of the shape of the lens, but try to get your normal going straight up and down. Then you can see your incident light ray. My refracted ray is going to be over here at 36 degrees. So 10, 20, 36. And it's going to have a pathway that looks like this. Okay, so for light ray number one, we're done. Okay, we have figured out the incident angle at this boundary. We calculated the refracted angle inside the glass lens. Then we measured the incident angle for that light ray when it hits the next boundary. And using Snell's Law, we calculated that the refracted angle was 36 degrees, and we measured that and drew it. Your next task is to repeat this for light ray number two and light ray number three. Light ray number three will be a very similar process to what we just did with light ray number one because it's also hitting the boundary at an angle. Light ray number two will be much easier because it is hitting the boundary um, straight on. Okay, go ahead and work that out.